Father, in the name of Jesus, we come confidently into your presence by the new and the living way through the blood of Jesus. And we lift up that name. Jesus Christ, we lift you up above every other name. Above every other spirit, above every other God, worshipped on the hearts. And I stand and I challenge in the name of Jesus, every enterprising spirit. I bind you. I lose your hold. I send you packing and I say no way to you here today. No way to you in the life of every one of us on ground online. We say Jesus Christ is the Lord over our spirits, over our souls, over our, our bodies. We worship you, Father. We love you. We are submitted to you in the name of Jesus. We open up our heart unto you, mighty, sweet, gentle, Holy Spirit. We ask that you will teach us of the Father. You will show that which is the is that of the Father to our heart today. You will comfort, you will heal, you will strengthen, you will embolden, you will empower. Each one will come to certain places, sure places of conviction that we can live our life by, that we can walk with you with confidently today in the name of Jesus. Father, I am just a vessel here. You have the right of way. That which you have in mind, speak to me, speak to us. In the mighty name of Jesus. It's going to be the sound of my own voice. But the words will be yours, Father. It's your word. That you will cause everyone to hear you today. Everyone will hear you today. Everyone will hear you today. That is called today in the honors of eternity. And that every heart will respond positively to you, to your words, to our healings, to our lifting, to our glorification in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. The Lord bless you. I want to thank God and thank the pastor for this opportunity to share on a day like this. I believe you're going to be blessed. I don't just believe it for believing sake. I know you are going to be blessed because it is not my word. It is the Lord speaking to you. I know you will be blessed. And this, the topic God has put on my heart this morning to share with us is, is strange. No? And I'm going to say, this is also the first time I'm also hearing the word. I just had that word in my heart. And I had to go and check the dictionary to know the meaning. So the topic I'm sharing with us is the most pricey possession. If I may ask, how many of us know the meaning of pricey? I know the pastor will know. <laughs> how pricey? P-R-I-C-E-Y. I know Sister Shane will know. <laughs> the most pricey. I had never heard that word. It came to me. I had to go and check the dictionary. So the most pricey possession. I know we know the meaning of possession. That's whatever treasure, whatever properties, physical, whatever that you have. 
and pricey means expensive. The most expensive possession you can have, the most expensive possession that you have, I don't know the angle at which God is coming to you today, but I know it's come to provoke something in each and every one of us. And before I go on, uh, some instruction came to my heart. I felt it was for me alone. I was thinking, will I share it with us? Won't I share it? But the, the tone of this service today encouraged me to share it. And the first challenge is this statement that we need, you need to go home and think about it and make adjustment. We come to church to worship. We come to God to receive from God. We come to God to learn and make adjustments in our relationship with him. You know, the, the brother Paul this morning said, God, we should go home and think about this statement that God is not for transaction. It's he, every time we say, God, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, he is not just the Santa Claus God that wants to, he wants to bless us. A father always wants to bless his children. But at that, he wants an, a relationship and intimacy. And we grow in relationship, we grow in intimacy. That what came to me. Are you drawing towards God or are you drifting away from him? Are you drawing towards God or are you drifting away from him? The scripture says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. When we draw near to God, he draws near to us. And that is where our satisfaction, our utmost satisfaction is. Ask yourself, I write my notes this way. Am I drawing away from God? Am I drawing towards God? Or am I drifting away from him? Then another thing I want to share with us is that it will do each and every one of us a whole world lot of good to do our Bible study as from now in Amplified Version. Please get the Amplified Version of the Scriptures and study. I discover that different, the KJV Bible is so poetical. It brings much many poetical meanings to us. But I discover when we sit down and we study Amplified Version, he gives you other meaning, synonyms, it gives expression, and it, and it makes it clearer. Then uh, go to the book of Proverbs and let's study. You know, let's take time to, to study. I discover that studying the book, it, there are sentences in the scriptures that we need to even take the dictionary and check the meaning. Most time, we just read, and we read, and we off we go, off we go, off we go. But when we really sit down and study those words, it might be one word that the Holy Spirit will expand and expand and expand in our hearts. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So we are going. The most pricey possession. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6. That's where we are starting from this morning. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 19 to verse 21. That's where we are reading. The scripture says, and this place tells us about treasure that we can term as possessions. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 19. I think I need a little bit. I, I think, can somebody give me? A pen touch, a, the phone touch. I need to see better. This light is too much for me, I think. Verse 19 to 21. The scripture says, Thank you, Ma. Matthew chapter 6, 
from verse 19. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on hearts. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on hearts. We are moth and rust destroy. And we are thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. We are neither moth nor trust destroy, nor rust destroys. And we are thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where your treasure is, wherever your possession is, wherever your investment is, that is where your mind will be. And that is where you, what you think about every time. That is what you want to support. That is where you want to defend. That is where you want to put your best in. And the instruction God says, is, God is not saying, don't buy land, don't buy stock, don't invest. If you listen to the word of God, the way God speaks to us, he uses proverbs. God uses comparisons to explain things to us. The meaning is, the most precious things of your life should not be on this heart. Because, and that's why the scripture says, set your affection on things above where Christ is. Wherever your affection is, that is where your life will tend towards. I have sat down a little bit and I have taken the word of God that says, 120 years shall be the year of human being on heart. So if you live a full life, if you live up to 120 years, that means you have fulfilled the scriptures. After the 120 years, you are going to pass to the other world. And like every one of us in this church this morning know, there is another life after this life. This is not the only life. You may not believe it, but it does not change the truth. If you are going to Buckingham Palace this morning, and you feel the way to Buckingham Palace is to go from Farindin to Liverpool Street Station, and you take the train going to Ipswich, you sincerely thought that that is the way to the Buckingham Palace. If you get on that train, will you ever get to Buckingham Palace? That you are sincerely wrong. Has it changed the way to Buckingham Palace? That is the issue about God. He has called us to believe him. People who have believed him, they have tested him. The scripture says, the scripture, the word of God has been tested seven times. And it's been found to be perfect. So the scripture says, we should not lay our treasure on heart. We are inflation, depression, recession, destroys. And what are the possessions we have on the heart? Money, fame, power, position, status, class, family, inheritance, you know, you may have maybe dresses, precious stones, you have bought shares, you have recognitions, you have degrees, you have precious metals, you have foundations, legacy, what you do, those are our possession on this heart. And because they are temporary, they hand on the heart. What has God said about all the possession, whatever benefit or gains that we think we have on heart? Let's go to Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8, the scripture tells us 
from verse 34. I want us to see the scriptures. I don't have any word. It is God that has his word that is reminding us of or telling, the, or telling us for the first time this morning. Mark chapter 8 from verse 34. The scripture says, Mark chapter 8 from verse 34. When he had called the people to himself, that's Jesus while he was in the flesh, with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever and on and on, Jesus continued. If it is possible for only one man to own this world, the Lord says, if you lose your own soul, that means if you have all the treasures, all the reserve that is in the Bank of England, Bank of America, the Swiss Bank, all together as a person, it is in invaluable. It is incomparable to the worth of your soul before the Lord. And that is how precious humans we are to God. There is a place in the scriptures. The Bible says the redemption of our soul is precious. The life that you have, that God gave you, is precious. So let's begin to put our lives in perspective. If you have all the degrees in the world and you made the mistake of losing your soul, and how do we lose our souls? Whatever soul is not given for the worship of God, is not given to God, is lost. The Bible says, Behold, God made man perfect, but men have sought out many inventions. There are many invented gods, many invented lords, many invented idols. Mommy was saying at the headquarters this morning, it is not a hate message that Jesus Christ is the only way to God. You may believe it. You may not believe it. If you believe it, you receive the blessing. You don't believe it, the consequences will come. If you have all the treasures, Jesus says, and your soul is lost, you have not gained anything. So what is your most pricey possession? And the most, not even our soul as it is this morning, but the most pricey possession that we have as human being is the love of God. The most pricey possession, if you lose everything on the earth, please, do not lose the love of God. The love of God. It is always available for us. It is limitless. It is eternal. There is nothing we can do that can withdraw the love of God for the human race. At the end of everything, Daddy was teaching at the headquarters church one day and he said even when God will have to send the sinners to the lake of fire with the devil his love will still be for them. It's only they have rejected his love. The most expensive possession you have as a human being is the love of God. That love is forever. 
it is limitless. You do not need to earn it. You do not need to qualify for it. It is offered to us human beings free of charge. Nobody begs a father or a mother to love their children. They are naturally loved. As you know, and if God who created us gave us intuition, gave us initiative, put the impetus in us to love, it means that is the exact outflow of how God himself is. The most pricey possession you have is the love of God for you. Is the acceptance of God. Whoever you are from whatever race, black, white, red, brown, you are as acceptable to God as anyone. No matter what your thoughts are, no matter what your personality is, no matter what your background is, you are loved by God. You are loved, you are accepted. You are important. You are so valuable to God. And let's go to Jeremiah chapter 31. So that we can hear this, the word of God by himself. I want you to listen in your hearts. As you listen with your ear this morning. And hear God. Jeremiah chapter 31 from verse 1. At the same time, says the Lord. I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. Israel, when I went to give him rest, the Lord has appeared of old to me, saying, Yes, I have loved you. With an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. That is the word of God. If you will hear it this morning. I'm going to read it again. The Lord has appeared of hold to me saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn you. We are going to John chapter 3. John chapter 3 and from verse 1. I want us to read the background again of John 3.16 that all of us quote every time. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I'm reading verse 4. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born? When he is old, can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Verse 9. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most assuredly I say to you, verse 11, If I have told you, Earthly things, and you do not believe. How will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus has not come to condemn us. Jesus is the personification of the love of God to us. All that he is, he has given to us. If you go to the book of the prophet in Isaiah, the Bible says Jesus shall be called wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, everlasting father, the prince of peace. Every of those names explains the love of God to us. The counselor, wonderful, the mighty God, the everlasting father. And the love of God has made God available to us. The love of God has made the might of God, the person of God, intimacy. You know, there's that song, what a great story, a great story. God to leave his throne and to come to the world and to make a friend with wretched sinners. What a great story, great story. You know, I used to think that it's only Christians that God loves. But I was just reminded one day that before you became a Christian, all of us were sinners. Adam sold us to the devil. So he loves us equally. He has only, like, was it this morning that we were praying that God does not abandon humans? It is, oh, it was mom that was saying it. God does not abandon humans. It is when you abandon God, when you fear, Lord, ha, ah, you have left me, ha, ah, you have left me. It is not God that has left you. It is you that you shifted. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. You only shifted. You only shifted. You know? How, how, does, how does shadow forms? What, is it when you face the light or when you are backing the light? Sir? When you face the light, is that, how, is that when shadows form? Whether you are facing... Okay, I think, how does it grow longer or shorter? That is it. He does not, God doesn't leave us. The Bible says he has created eternity in our heart. Why do you think people with so much money, people with so much privileges, there is something that is insatiable. They are just not content. They are just not satisfied. After all the reveling, the parties, the pleasure, the wine, something in you is not just satisfied. And that is the call out of the eternity, the God part, the vacuum that nothing can fill except God. Calling now. The Bible says, deep calleth unto deep. God is so deep. God is so mysterious. You cannot empirically test God and his word in the lab. And that's why it's so difficult for people that are science-oriented to believe God. But I found a witness. Somebody who studied, I think, chemical, uh, chemical or biological thing in a deeper level said, he discovered that the arrangement of protein in the body is, and the functioning is so mysterious that he began to call his attention that this is not just random. This is planned. Who planned this? Who is orchestrating this? Who makes things work in such a perfect balance like this? And that is the God Almighty who created us. So whatever your situation is today, you may be homeless hearing the word of God this morning. You may, be, you may not have food to eat. And you may have all the money in the world. You might be destitute. You are as loved. You are as loved. 
You are as loved as the richest person on the heart. Who is it that is truly rich? Who is it that is truly wealthy? If not the one that has the love of God, that has the attention of God, that is so, so important to God. God said, you are so important to me, I have graven you on the palms of my hands. The most expensive possession you have, the most expensive possession you can have is the love of God. Let's go to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. We are seeing the love of God personified in Jesus. He said, John chapter 10 verse 10, I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Jesus came, the love of God came that we may have life, have it abundantly. If we will only learn how to assess the life. Romans chapter 5. And we are going to see the love of God from verse 1. The scripture says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory, and so on. I'm jumping to verse 9. The scripture says, verse 9, but God, okay, let me read verse 6. For when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly, for scarcely for a righteous man we won't die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone will even dare to die. But God demonstrates his love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us much more than. Having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more, having, more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. We are reconciled back to God because of his love. God had to live everything in glory. He set the standard of righteousness. The soul that sin shall die. Adam sinned. All of us human, we died in him. God himself came as human. And he came to fulfill the righteous requirement of his, his, his standard of righteousness. He died, he lived, he died, and he's promised us. What do you do to accept my love? Briefly, we are going to see it. The love of God is enabling. The love of God is empowering. The love of God is healing. The love of God is defending. The love of God strengthens. The love of God emboldens. If you read Psalm 18 from verse 28, it's a long, it's a, a long psalm. But you're going to see the attribute of the love of God. The love of God has brought God closer to us. The love of God has drawn us towards God. And his love is eternal. Is eternal. It can never be taken from you. The Bible says, even the Holy Ghost has shed abroad the love of God in our hearts. If you have found faith to believe that Jesus is Lord, if you have found faith to believe that God exists, that is his love drawing you towards him. 
at every turn, when you see his goodness, we read Psalm 23 all the time. That is the love of God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. One version says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He leads me. He directs me. He guides me. He feeds me. He makes me to lie down in green pasture. He restores my soul. He strengthens me. The love of God is, is so much that even when you feel like doing the craziest thing on the heart, do you know you can confidently tell God and say, Father, oh, I don't feel like praying. Father, I don't feel like coming to church. Father, I just want to die. You can tell God. And he can take it. We have seen examples from the scriptures. Elijah went to God after he had fought the battle of the Lord. And weariness set in in his body. He said, God, it's enough. I am not better than my forefather. Please take my life. And God said, Elijah, is that what you're going to say? You are hungry. He sent an angel from heaven. He fed him. And again, Elijah, go, go, came to him. Go, showed him. Mountains was rumbling. You know, God didn't show up. River, eh, wind was blowing. God didn't show up. And the scripture says, a gentle, still, small voice. You feel you don't hear the Lord. I don't know the voice of the Lord. You know it. That idea floating into your heart. Pray, pray, pray. That is the Holy Spirit. The devil will never ask you to pray. Give, give. The devil will never ask you to do anything good. There is nothing good in the devil. You are smart. You are good looking. The devil is never going to tell you that. What the devil would rather tell you is that you are too slim. You are too fat. You are, you are ugly. Just go and commit suicide. That is the devil. The scripture says the devil is, is the thief that always comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Destroy our peace, destroy our marriages, destroy our finances, destroy our future. That is what the devil is out doing. But Jesus has come to give us a full life, a peaceful life, peace with God, peace from God, and the peace of God that even in the midst of waves and waves of trouble, Waves and waves of need. You know, do you know, there are times you are so stressed, you are hard pressed, bodies and busyness from work, issues in your marriage, issues in your finances, and you feel, Lord, I can't take it anymore. At those times, the love of God is comforting. You only need to open the scriptures. It guides a song to you. It guides somebody to share something in church. It guides a friend to give you a leaflet. And there you are, your answer. Jesus is the answer of God to all human needs. Jesus is the expression of his love. If we will only get to know him, if we will only make up our mind to walk with him, if we will only get to accept his own ways, we will enjoy God more and more. The love of God. How do you purchase it? How do you purchase the love of God? How do you get it? You can go to Sainsbury. Flip your card. <laughs> you can walk in to ask that. You put your card for whatever. But do you know, you have only got to just accept it by your faith. 
And do you know every one of us, there is that capacity in us. Why did you sit on the chair you were sitting on this morning? Why do you put water to your mouth? If you believe that if I take this water, I have seen it before. Somebody was operated upon first time, second time. He had a young man. He had cancer of the stomach. The first time, the second time, the third time, it became so infected so bad that the, 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 the abdomen was not closing up any longer. So when he put something in his mouth, you see it coming out. You see it literally. You are not going to see it go down esophagus, down, down into the stomach, but immediately it then gets to the stomach. You see it all over him. All over. It was, it, that was one of the terrible things I have seen in my life. Oh, Jesus. That was one of the terrible things I've seen in my life. But do you know, if only somebody at that time would believe in God, will lay hold on the word of God and say, Lord, this is what you have said. He could have been savaged. But all the faith that was then from him, from the parents, was a medical practice. When the expert fail, where do you go? Do you know? Do we know that experts have failed? They are failing. They are going to fail. Not because they want to fail, but because they are meant to fail. When we are dealing with issues in the natural. We experts can undo it to a certain stage. But it even gets beyond the knowledge of man. Science has found out so many beautiful things that God has put in nature. Tried as it is, people are frozen, you know, embryos. They have reimplanted them, they have given birth. But no human being had been able to really form the embryo out of putting chemical together in the lab. It can never happen. You only take of what God has created and we put it together. After studying it, he has given us that power to study it. He said, human, dominate the heart. And when he said dominate, he gave us the authority. He gave us the capacity Human beings have, have discovered and invented so many things. But it is what we have been given. The scripture says, secret things belong to God. But the things that are given, they are for us and for our children. So let no man, past, present, and future, boast against God. You may deny the existence of God. But he will not deny himself. You may deny that nature, it is just mother heart. But if you sit down in the corridor of your heart, you, if you ask yourself during moment of truth, you will know that you have only discovered a pastor is a scientist. How do scientists arrive at conclusions. They, only, they start by postulating. They start by hypothesizing. Oh, if this is, I, I have studied this pattern. If it is like this, probably it's going to be like this. If you go to study medical advancements and discovery that we have today, how those things was, were discovered, they were horrendous. I learned that they had to open up all the book, in anatomy test book, I learned that they had to open up people without anesthesia. They had to open them up and study them and study them and put the pictures. It is not because man, man is not superpower. The only superpower there is is the Lord God Almighty who created the heaven and the earth, who chose to introduce himself to the world 
from the eastern region of the world, from Israel, the nation of Israel, who gave himself as Jesus, and he brought out the Christian faith. You were not born as a Christian. Nobody, you can only be born into a family that were Christians. Each one becomes a Christian by his choice, his decision, and his willingness to practice the word of God. You attending church does not make you a Christian. Doing charity work does not satisfy you. It, 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 it can boost your ego, but it does not satisfy the deep cry of your heart. It is good to do charitable work. But they are valuable when we do them in God, with God, through God, for God. How do you assess the love of God? Just accept it. Accept it. If you if you study the trend of life, different situation, different kingdoms, different empire, different religion, all the, all the world, you will see that there is something different, unique, and specific about Christianity. The life flow that comes from the Messiah, the life flow that comes from the God of the Bible, Somebody was saying this last week, wrote an article I loved, that there are some statements in the Bible that is no longer relevant to the modern world. Who told you that? What is going, the news that we are going to hear on BBC, CNN, Fox News, five, ten years time. Go and check Matthew 24. Coronavirus came and shut the whole world down. Has God not told us about it? He said, in the last day, there shall be plagues, pestilences. What was coronavirus? When scientists came to say the heart is flat, and they were postulating, they were postulating, different group, different group, what was the what is the now what is the general acceptance now? The word is circular. God already the Bible says it is God that sitteth upon the circle of the heart. You can choose to walk the way, or you can blindly, stubbornly say, I am going to devise my own way. But if you devise your own way, you will end up at your own destination. But we need not to. The scripture tells us. If why we were without strength, we weren't looking for God. You know, sometimes I was listening to a message this last week and I was thinking, God is very just too. I was not there when Adam decided to believe the devil and God already said, you and your descendant. God has given me a fair hearing. Don't you think so? Adam sinned. All of us in Adam, we sinned. And God said, oh, these ones were not there. Now I am offering you the way out. Just, I, am, I have come. Just accept my love in Jesus. Live in him. Live through him. Live with him. Walk with me to walk through him. And you are saved from the consequence of the fall of Adam. I said, God, you are very just. So if I decide not to believe Jesus again and you send me to hell, you will have been very just. You have given me a fair hearing. And this is a God who will go all the way to keep, to preserve. When the people who, who, who constructed Titanic said, I learned that somebody said, even God himself cannot sing the Titanic. Oh my God. And it was not even God that sang the Titanic. <laughs> it was just the iceberg that fell. That's a foolish statement from your mouth. The first voyage, 
Titanic did not get to the destination. Kingdoms rise and they win. Empire rise and they fall. People have come. They have gone. Do you know everything will follow the prediction of the word of God? Human beings cannot destroy this world because human beings did not create this world. So God is calling us, bow your hearts, bow your knees to the Lord God Almighty who made you and made the world for you. What do you do to the love of God? Your most expensive possession. Just believe it. Confess it. Accept it. Re re open your heart to that love. The love of God is found on the pages of the Bible. Take the Bible and, and hear God speak to you. I discover something. There is a strength that is infused into our spirit that counseling we never do. You go for psychological counseling, you have gone for therapies, clinical psychologists, they speak to you, they are motivating you. It is not going to do so. It won't do something. It won't, it won't touch it. One of the things God is directing my heart, it won't touch it. You know, how to maintain, man, you know, in this country we are so, 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 the government is so, so good, trying the, the, his best, you know, to, to make everybody comfortable mentally, you are healthy, you have the resources, money is being thrown at everybody, being, but I discover it is not working. It cannot be 100% effective because it is not touching the heart of the matter. Human beings are spirits, souls, and body. When you help the body and the soul, and the spirit is not help, it, is not, it cannot work because it is the spirit that powers life. It is your spirit that powers your mind and your body. Your body cannot power your mind and your, and your spirit. And the only way by which our spirit can be alive, oh my God, like begets like, is to be united back to the eternal spirit that created us. The Bible says God is the father of of all spirits. God gave birth to you. You can't be your best. You cannot be your best without being united with God. And you can only be united with God through Jesus Christ because that was God personified. He came, God came in the human form. He, he created it like God created a body for you. He created us spirits. And he, he has given human beings the power to create the body. Himself allowed himself to be created and put in the human body to satisfy his righteous requirements. And God wants us to respond positively to him. So what do you do to your most priceless possession? Value it. I'm using it in the word of possession, the love of God. But the real sense is value him. Value Jesus. Jesus, who came as the Lamb of God, is still coming back as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. The Bible says God has committed the judgment to his hand. If the scripture says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall come, whether you like it or not. It is good that God is offering you now. Let's have a good time. There was a time a thought came to my heart that, hmm, I want to have 
all the best of God I can have in this world, though, because I know in the new world we are going, it's going to be another world entirely. It won't be like this world again. It won't be like this one. So I want to have all the best of God. I came to a conclusion. If when Jesus comes back and God said, now I have changed my mind. There is no hell, like no punishment for sin again and everybody will go to the same heaven. I would still not have regretted being a Christian. I would still not have regretted giving my heart to Jesus because now I have my peace. I have my balance. So, experts, <laughs> experts cannot solve our deepest problem. It is only God. The answer to all human need that will solve the deepest problem. I have heard of a businessman who never lost in investment only because he gave his heart to Jesus. He knew how to work with the Holy Ghost. When they bring business ideas, he goes into his closet. He prays, he prays, he prays. Sometimes one day, two days, three times, three days. And the Holy Spirit tells him, invest in this world. Don't invest. And all of his lifetime I learned, he never lost any business. If there were people on the earth like that, they are witnesses to us. You can have the best of God. We have seen in the scriptures, we have seen in the contemporary world. Have you never heard of people who have booked their flights and the Holy Spirit, because they are children of God and they are sensitive to him, the Holy Spirit will tell him, don't get on that flight, son. And he wouldn't get on the flight because God knows the devil has gone, you know, <laughs> put things in place that that train, that uh, plane is not landing well. He won't step on it. He won't step on the train. And every other person will do what? We just crash and die. And do you know that it takes the devil a lot of work to cause a plane to, to crash because it's a very organized system. But does it still happen? Or it doesn't? It does. But some children of God, they, they have been saved. And that is the plan of God for every one of us. Can we go to Psalm 17? Can we go to Psalm 17? And that is the love of God. That you are not going to get into trouble if you will only yield to him. Into some, uh, 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 when I'm talking of trouble, is what the devil is planning. There will be challenges, of course. Life itself doesn't need to be a struggle if you only know how to walk it. And how do you walk life? If you want a stressless life. I am not talking of a life that, that nothing will challenge you. There won't be issue here. There, there will be issue. There will be problems. But you can face the problem confidently, resting upon the power of God, solving your problem, living your life with nobody, with, with no, no devil messing around with you. Psalm 17 verse 4. If you get that before me, you can help me read. But the scripture says, Psalm 17, verse 4. Concerning the works of men, by the word of your lips, I have kept away from the path of the destroyer. Who is the destroyer? The devil. If life does not need to be a struggle, you do not need to live under the heavy weight of the body and the stresses of life. You, if you know how to work it, and the way to walk life is that we walk by God. You walk life, walking in the love of God. You walk life. You know, people have mental health issues because of one comment somebody made, because of one thing that somebody did. Ha, it may be very painful, but do you know God is love, heal hearts. No matter how grievous the heart is, his love heals it. If only you will open up and you will accept it. What do you do to the love of God, your most priceless possession? You maintain his love in your heart. 
You maintain it in fellowship. You maintain it in relationship. We say the benediction. People say benediction. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. You maintain it with communion. You maintain it with worship. You maintain it, you know, with obedience. You maintain it with a heart seeking to, to love him. What do you do to the love of God? You live in it and live by it. Or in, your, in my way, live in him and live by him. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I, you can do all things. If you listen to the person that started this service this morning, he said, I knew I wasn't that smart. I chose to trust in him. And do you know that brother that chose, that knew he wasn't smart, what else do you want if you have studied a master's degree and you have graduated with distinction? What better thing can you have? Tell me. A apart from the marks they rate for masters, for degrees, when you have distinction, is there any other thing? So, that means the smartest guy in himself that God has blessed, that does not even know God has blessed him, has distinction. You that you know you are not smart in yourself. Trusting God. He has helped you to have distinction. Is there not, is that, is that, does, does it not add up? And the love of God is the greatest equalizer. You think your family background is not so good, you don't want it. You had the love of God to it. You think you weren't born the prince or the princess of England. Oh, la la. Had the love of God to your life. And you will see the beauty of God. You feel there is nothing good in you. Check very well. In the light of the love of God. Every one of us is a genius. You may not know how to sing. You may not know how to draw. You may not know how to read. You may not be the academic one. He, it may just be that you can, you can look, you, you, you have an understanding, an insight of the big picture. You just go and learn about project management. And they give you project and you execute it. That is where your blessings are. Don't strive to be another person. You are well acceptable to God. Don't strive to be another person. Just release yourself to God in his love. Accept his love. Function in his love. Let his love power your life. Let his word embolden you to face life. You can do it all. And what do you do to the love of God? Lastly, you share the love of God with others. It is possible to do so many things without love. It is possible to do things for pragmatic reasons. But God, but God, but God, he has given all of himself to us in Jesus. He say, it's like God saying, use me. Use me. Use my name to live a healthy life. Use my name to live a bold life. Use my name to live a, 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 a peaceful life. Use my name. He said, had the mention. Jesus said, when you go to the Father, whatsoever you ask from the Father in my name, he shall give us. He said, whatsoever. Whatsoever in English is what? Whatsoever. It may be little, but I want to share this. I was to catch a bus some few weeks ago 
But I was a little bit late. And you know the bus driver, once they move from the station, no stopping. I was running. I was running. I was just there. And as I was running, I saw the bus. The driver just moved. I said, God. I was, it was even so snappy, I couldn't utter any prayer. And I knew once I missed that bus, I was going to be late for the appointment I was to keep. You know, you know, like your heart just crying out to say, oh, God. And do you know the bus driver has moved from like this place to this other end? And he waited. He waited. I was amazed. I jumped on that bus. I said, Jesus. Because I knew that was God. And that is what the love of God can do. So share the love of God. Share the love of God. Share the love of God. Can we bow down our head this morning? I know God has spoken to you. If it is that you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord, speak to him this morning. Don't say Jesus. If it is that you have not gotten convinced that God loves you, you have accepted Jesus as your Savior and Lord, you have mental agreement, but you don't have a heart conviction. I don't know. God must have spoken something to your heart this morning. Can you say it back to him? Lord, I accept your love. I respond to your love. I confess your love in the name of Jesus. Brother Joshua, please help me. Can you tell him, I respond to God. I, uh, to your, I accept your love. You know, there is something that is linked to your words. Your words before God. Bring the thought of your heart. Say it out to God in your own word. I accept your love. I respond to your love. I will live in your love. Oh, I, I yield to your love. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. If you, are just, if you don't know the Lord as a person, this is Jesus Christ, the one who came to die for you, who came to bring you back to God. Just tell him, Jesus, the love of God personified, come into my heart. Father God, forgive me my sins. I accept Jesus as my Savior, as my Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, lift me out of sorrow. Lift me out of depression. You are there. You have mental health issue. You have physical issue. You have physical amen. Just say, Lord, let your love lift me out. Let your love heal my spirit. Let your love heal my spirit soul. Let your love heal my body. You are there. You are holding offenses. Somebody has offended you. You find it so difficult you know to forgive. Just say Lord, your love. Your love. Your love. Let it heal my heart. Somebody broke your heart. Just say Lord, I release my heart to your love. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I yield to your love over and over again. In in the mighty name of Jesus, we release ourselves to your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Speak to God, continues to speak to God. Respond to him. Whatever, wherever God is touching your heart, just speak to him. Just come in with the Lord deeply in your spirit as you listen to that song. Just come in with the Lord in your spirit. It's, it's just you and God. It's just you and God. 
For God so loved us so much. <laughs> For God so loved us that he gave his only begotten son. If we can ever fathom, fathom how much God loves us, it should give you confidence to face life. Should give you boldness to face life. Should give you courage. God, if there's one thing you must learn from that message today is that God loves you. God loves you. No matter how bad it looks, God loves you. No matter how ugly it looks, God loves you. No matter how impossible it looks, God loves you. The doctor has said, given my 30 years experience, I've seen this case before. This is how it always ends up. God loves you. That matter is not the end. That matter is not the end. She said something that touched my spirit. Where do you go when the ex- experts, when they have gotten to the end of their wisdom? When the doctor has said, hmm. I came across a, listen, listen, I came across a testimony this week and it, 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 it shocked me. The, the man was, um, was an alcoholic and then he was in rehab and he had spent a lot of time in rehab and he got to a point where he, he knew that this rehab thing was not working and he knew that he would be dead in a couple of days if God didn't help him. So in his desperation and his frustration, he he closed his eyes and shouted, God, if you are anywhere, help me. And the man said, the next thing he knew was that the Lord Jesus walked through the door in his rehab. Can you reduce it a bit? The Lord Jesus walked in into the rehab center, the rehabilitation center and just gave him a big hug and told him it was okay. And the Lord left. He said, from that day, he, he couldn't bear to touch a bottle of alcohol like that, that it irritated his spirit. So he, he had been there trying to quit, trying to quit, trying to quit. Never happened. One encounter. And from that day, that, the man, like an elderly man said, that was in the 70s. He, the, the thought, he, he, he would, the, if he thought of it, he would want to puke. That was his deliverance. And then one day, you know, Satan is always upset when his captives are free. So the man was driving home one day. And he got hit by a truck. Totally got hit. Cleared by a truck such that the truck flipped. And that it was just by God's grace that the truck didn't land on top of his car. And so when they brought him out, he had fracture of this, fracture of that. Swelling in the head and all that. Eventually they took him into emergency surgery. You know, I remember that testimony because of one thing she said about the man that whose tummy was open. So this man was in surgery for hours. And afterwards, the surgeon came back and told his wife, like, we have tried, but it's so bad that we can't even close him up again. So they said, do you want to come and look at him? Because he has about three hours left. He will be dead. The doctor told that he will be dead in three hours. The man will be dead in three hours. So she walks into surgery and there is her husband lying there with his entire stomach open because the doctors couldn't pull it together to close it. And so she looked at the doctor and said, would you agree with me, doctor, that this man would not die? Doctor looked at her like, are you mad? I'm telling you, this man will be dead in three hours. Go put your affairs together. We can't even sew his stomach together. So his intestines were out. Everything was out. This man will be dead in three hours. So she said, give me one hour. She went into the hospital chapel and prayed like she had never prayed before. And then she went back to the doctor and said, doctor, would you agree with me that this man will not die? And the doctor said, well, let me, let me entertain your madness for a few minutes. Mm. And, and said, okay. So he held hands with the doctor and the woman started to pray. She prayed for about five minutes before the doctor removed his hand. That, that's enough entertainment. And the man left. And then she, she sat outside. Sat outside. And one hour, two hours, three hours, the man did not die. 
Four hours, the man did not die. Woke up next morning, the man was still alive. Ah. Doctor went in and said, how is this man still alive? The doctor came in expecting to be told that they had moved him to the morgue because he was dead. So the doctor came in the next morning, the man was still alive. Okay. Said, it looks like your prayers are working, but we still can't close him up. Said, don't worry. So she took a chair, sat with him in the intensive care unit. She didn't go home for 52 days. She sat next to that man for 52 days. And they were asking her that, what happened? Said, there was a day that was particularly bad. And at that point, she was thinking, maybe, she was thinking that maybe I should just give up and just go home. And then she said she was walking up and down the room and she was saying, I've tried, but it is time for you to fight for yourself. The man was in coma. When the man woke up, he was dead. That was when the man was saying the fact that he heard her. He heard that when she was saying it's time for you to fight. And at that point, this is to give an example, to, uh, to show you how the spirit realm works. At that, he said all through the time the woman didn't leave, there were three angels standing by him. And they did, as long as the woman was in the room, they were also in the room. Said so there was the day that the spirit of death came for him. That was the day the woman was about to give up. And the spirit of death came into the room. And she was saying, it's time for you to fight. And the angel said, do you want to stay? They were asking the man in coma, do you want to stay or do you want to leave? And he said, all he could hear was the voice of his wife. And the angel said, if you leave now, there will be no more pain. He said, no, because of this woman, I cannot leave. He he wa to everybody else, he was in coma. He couldn't hear anything. But the man himself could see what the woman was doing for 52 days. And as long as she didn't give up, that man did not. After 52 days, they wheeled that man out of the hospital. All the doctors were lining up like this. All the nurses were lining up like this because they be it was impossible. Few weeks after, another man ended up in that same hospital. And the so the pastor, because the pa that man's pastor came, that woman's pastor came to pray with her in the hospital. So the that doctor, the surgeon, saw the man again and like, what are you here for? And he said, Well, another member of mine is in the hospital. The surgeon was like, ah, if it's your member, you'll be fine. If it's your member, it will be fine. As long as we do not give up on God. There's nothing. There's that person that you've been praying for for 15 years and it looks like nothing is happening. If you don't give up on God, God is not going to give up on that person. Many times it is when we, we when we, sometimes when, what, what we do is we hold on to it and we are trying to fix it and trying to fix it. In trying to fix it, you are, you are not allowing God to fix it. So hand it over. Just give it up. Like, okay. This one, Lord, is beyond me. Just close your eyes wherever you are. If there is a situation like that, that it looks like it's beyond you, you have tried, you have spoken to the person. Maybe it's a boss, maybe it's a child, maybe it, it happens to even people. There are times when Satan just comes for men. Or a rob I, I, was it or a robot? I had the story. One of the things that instigated the healing anointing was the fact that his own son died in some in some crazy way like that. Things happen. This is a fallen world. Things happen. Your best plan can go to can go down the drain because somebody did something they shouldn't have done. I was listening to the story of a young girl that decided at 18 she felt she was old enough to have sex now and unfortunately the very first guy she decided to hand her virginity to gave her hiv in return how do you even begin to fix that but there is a god in heaven just ask the lord i'm going to actually anoint your hands and then you pray for yourself and then that hand you lay it on anything on anyone, on any situation, on any circumstance, and say, Lord, I choose that your love will prevail. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And if he has given you Jesus, there's nothing else God cannot give you. If God did not withhold Jesus from you, there is nothing else that will withhold from you. Is it love? Is it care? Is it provision? Is it solution? There is nothing else that God will withdraw from you. 
He loves you too much to watch you suffer. He loves you too much to watch you in pain. He loves you too much to watch you cry. He loves you too much. Too much. Many times we are the ones that don't give space for that love to be expressed. But God loves, always tell yourself, God loves me too much to leave me like this. God loves me too much to let this situation overcome me. God loves me too much to let this matter go this way. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you because of your overwhelming love. We thank you for your overwhelming love. When we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now that we are saints... Now that we are saints, now that we are saints, now that we are saints, oh Lord, we thank you. 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 Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Yes, there are there are rough edges. Yes, there are changes we need to make in our lives. Yes, there are there are adjustments we need to make. But as we, while we are still journeying, we, we are while we are still journeying towards being a better version of ourselves, you still love us. You loved us when we were sinners, you love us now that we are saved. You love us as we move towards being a better person every day. We thank you. We thank you. Even as we journey towards maturity, we thank you because you love us. That is the foundation of everything. That is the foundation of everything. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. If you are here believing God um, about something, just come quickly. I'm going to put some of this anointing oil on your hand. And, and then you can go lay hands on anything that is, whether it's a situation or circumstance. Is anybody here believing God for something? Uh, just, let's just put a little on your hand like that. Uh, I don't want to waste it. Oops. Once I've anointed you, just put your hand, um, just pray for yourself. Ribushata Libra Hando Sketi Kleheto Suria Bada Skida Bash Rudo Skepti Libra Hando Sketu Zia Masutia Kosia Barato Sketus Redodosha. Just mention that thing to the Lord. Just mention that. That thing says, By the anointing, every yoke is broken. By the anointing, every yoke is broken. By the anointing, every yoke is broken. The anointing speaks for you. The anointing speaks for you. Rudo shata brahadoske velita hand. Zeli brahadoske te brahadoske veniantoski brahandoske ta. Jedaba brotoske te li grahadoske te. Your testimony is show. Your testimony is show. Your testimony is show. Your testimony is show. Hura bose hikavre hentos katelia. Marutoske la brahados ketigla hados sizam brahados ketia. Embrohotos sizam brahados ketia. Your testimony is show because God loves you. Even if it's a mistake you have made because you have come to the Lord this morning, you are forgiven and you are helped. And you are helped. I command restoration 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 for everything you have lost a hundredfold for everything you have lost a thousandfold the Lord redeems time for you the Lord redeems days for you in the name of Jesus in Jesus name we pray father I pray for your people they've come to you in faith They've come to you. He said, no one comes to the Father except the Father draws us first. You've drawn us. You've drawn us. That's why we are here. We are not here because we are legalistic. We are not here because we think we are better than others. It's because you have had mercy on our soul. Lord, thank you for your love that brought your mercy. Thank you for your love that brought your grace. Thank you for your love that brought redemption. Thank you for your love that brought forgiveness. Thank you also for that love that has brought strength today, that has brought encouragement today, that has brought an uplifting in our souls, that while we are walking towards being better versions by the Holy Ghost, your love for us can never diminish. Lord, help us to always live in the consciousness of your love 
help us to always be reminded we know the devil we know the world we know situations and circumstances always want to tell us we are not good enough always want to tell us how bad we are always want to tell us how average we are always wants to tell us how disadvantaged we are always tell us always wants to tell us things that are not your plan but let us always put at the forefront of our faces that we that you love us let us never forget how much you love us let us never forget how much you care for us let us never forget how much you are interested that we prosper spirit soul and body and i pray for your people everyone believing you for something as we have anointed our hands this morning that lord we go and we prosper everything we lay our hands upon prosper we win today we win every day that challenge that has been an obstacle becomes a stepping stone in the name of jesus you are helped beyond your 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 thinking more than you can envisage you are helped more than you can think of you are helped more than you can think of you are provided for the story of everyone in this place and listening online today would be that when the world says there's a casting down, you will say there's a lifting up. Your hands are lifted. Your economy is blessed. You live by the economy of the Holy Ghost. The, the government policies will not hurt you, but you rise above everything. And Jesus will be glorified in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.